Oh, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Here we discuss further into differential equations and now look further at the population growth model, the logistic equation, and now go over example one. And this one will utilize direction fields. Again, make sure to watch my earlier videos to get caught up on direction fields, uh, logistic equation, etc. I'll put all those in a link below. So the question states, draw a direction field for the logistic equation with k equals 0 0.08. Remember, k is just the proportionality constant. And the carrying capacity, capital K uh, equals 1,000. This one, again, is just the long-term population that a given environment can hold. And now we're asked, what can you deduce about the solutions? So again, make sure to watch my earlier videos, get a better idea on that. And also in my last video, I went over the uh, logistic equation. So recall from my last video that the logistic equation is dp over dt equals to k. This is this uh, value right here times by the population. So basically the growth rate is equal to k times p, 1 minus population divided by capital K. I'll make this like that. So indicate it's capital. So this is the logistic equation. And now if we input our uh, uh, parameters right there, we get dp over dt equals 2.08p, and then 1 minus right here, this is p over 1,000. So this is our logistic differential equation for these given parameters, like that. And now we're going to basically, uh, we're asked to draw a direction field. And remember again from my earlier videos on direction fields, a direction field is basically the slopes at many points on a graph. Uh, basically you just pick any points T and P and then calculate DP over DT by this formula and then you just uh, draw a bunch of slopes on a bunch of points and get and what we get is this. So this is uh, a slope field calculator, or slope field or the same thing as direction field and you get uh, you get just a bunch of slopes across. I use this one here. You could just Google any and find find some here. So basically the input here is f of y and f of x y this one and you couldn't put the uh, variable p or t so when it says y here that's just uh, just considered as our uh, our population p and also the x uh, just assume it's time or for t so x and y that's just uh, t and p so what we get is this uh, direction field right here. And again, this is just our differential equation. The variables are just different. Yeah, so here I've copied and pasted that slope field or direction field uh, onto here. And again, this is our P. And this one is T. So just ignore that X and Y. That's the same thing as T and P. So yeah, that one just didn't, uh, you couldn't change a variable on that website. Anyway, so what we have is this direction field. And again, these are just a bunch of points. And then you would calculate their slope and then just draw a, uh, a direction uh, indicating the slope. Whereas, as you can see, as it gets uh, near the carrying capacity, it's going leveling off, etc. Yeah, so now some uh, pointers on this direction field. This logistic equation, notice, uh, is autonomous. And I went over this actually before as well. Uh, autonomous. This is basically because the dp over dt or the growth rate depends only on p. As you can see from the formula, there is no t in here. So what this means, yeah, so this not depend on the t variable. Uh, but only the population size. So the slopes are the same along the horizontal line. So basically if you have the same population of let's say 200, notice that all the slopes are exactly the same and same with 1000. It's all the same So because it, it does not depend on the uh, t or uh, on the time at all. And that's why it's called autonomous. And uh, as expected, the slopes are positive for uh, p is between 0 and 1000. And uh, again, I went over before when it's between zero and the carrying capacity k equals to a thousand right here. Notice how the slopes are all positive; they're all going up, so they're all positive, uh, positive slopes. Let's write this a bit neater. So it's positive slope, and but as you can see, and it's negative for when p is greater than a thousand. So when the population is greater than the carrying capacity k. Notice here all the slopes are going pointing downward, so we have negative slope. In other words, population is decreasing whenever it's above the carrying capacity. 
and now the slopes are small when p is close to zero and a thousand the carrying capacity as, as you can see here the slopes are are small when it's near zero and then it gets higher and higher and as you can see near a thousand it's just leveling off a uh, flat line there and uh, also notice that the solutions move away from the equilibrium solution p equals zero and move towards the uh, equilibrium solution P is a thousand again if you were to draw a solution uh, so the equilibrium again again when I went over my other video equilibrium solutions are basically uh, yeah when you have a flat line so basically if if uh, we consider the solution P of T is equal to zero so when this solution uh, when the population size is zero then what we end up having is well the derivative P of zero I mean P of T is equal to zero and if we plug into that differential equation well DP over DT that's the same thing as P prime uh, this equals to zero and also uh, this equals to KP one minus P over K uh, capital K like that and again uh, this one is just zero so this is all zero so basically what we have is zero equals to zero so these are called equilibrium solutions and also when you have it uh, if P of T is equal to the carrying capacity K in, a, in our case 1000 then what we end up having is well again this is if this is just equal to K then the derivative again is going to be equal to zero and then plug this in again DP over DT equals to zero equals to KP 1 minus and again this would be equal to K capital I'll just uh, ignore that so P over K like this and then when you plug in this one here K this is becomes 1 minus 1 which then that just gets all to 0 again we have a 0 equals to 0 so these are equilibrium solutions and they're just flat lines across here and as you can see it says notice the solutions move away from the equilibrium and move towards and again another thing I pointed I didn't point out earlier I'm only graphing when time is greater than zero and when population is positive because otherwise it doesn't make sense. You can't have a negative time and you can't have a negative uh, population. This doesn't make any sense. So, uh, for example, if you were to look at a point, let's say uh, somewhere here, as you can see, the uh, the solutions are moving away and away from that. Uh, yeah, from this. Uh, all of these solutions are actually moving away from the zero equilibrium uh, solution all the way to uh, getting closer to the carrying capacity K. And yeah, now the uh, other part of the question I guess is what can you deduce about the solutions? Well this is one of the, the, the stuff we could deduce is that it moves away from zero to the 1000. Uh, another one we, we could do is well let's just draw these out. So let's use the direction field to sketch solution curves with initial populations P of 0 equals 100, 400, and 1300. So let's say if this is 200, let's say uh, this is 100, I'll draw this in uh, red, and this will, this will all be similar to the one I just drew that over there. So if we were to draw something like this, again notice it just becomes going, uh, following these direction curves and reaching the carrying capacity. So that's 100, let's look at the next one was 400, and then 1300. So 400 it goes up something like this, just follow it and then just goes uh, horizontal, let's draw this a bit neater like that and just goes like that and then the other one 1300 like this and notice uh, this one it just goes down whoops, and then it just becomes a flat line like that. Let's see if I draw this a bit neater hard uh, drawing it one more time okay so again I get just flat lines across like that so yeah so the other point I want to make is notice the solution curves uh, that start below P equals 1000 uh, are increasing and those that start above are decreasing again I've already, already explained uh, that above uh, basically when, when it's below the carrying capacity uh, then basically uh, it's it's all increasing all the solutions and when it's above it's just decreasing like that and also another point is the slopes are greatest when P is uh, roughly equal to 500 
So for example, this is 500. Notice how all these slopes are, uh, are very high. So initially it's flat line, flat line, and then as it goes up and up near the uh, 500 mark, it's really steep, and all of a sudden it starts decreasing, decreasing. So around uh, this 500 mark, in f but in fact, we can actually prove that all solution curves that start below P equals to 500, yeah, all of them actually have an inflection point where P is exactly 500. So, yeah, for example, if you were to start anywhere below this 500 mark, then the inflection point um, it would always be around, uh, exactly 500 here. In other words, that's going to be the highest slope. And uh, basically, recall that inflection point in my earlier video. I'll put that in the link below. Is when the second derivative go uh, it changes signs. I'll erase this. Goes typo. Uh, I.e., uh, or for example, changes concavity. And I'll go over this in my next video. If, uh, I'll prove this. It's exactly 500. So stay tuned for that. And again, recap on the inflection point. If you have function like x y, for example, in our case, let's say you had a function like this. It goes like that. So this is the inflection point right here. Inflection point. And as you can see, this is changes concavity. So this is the highest slope at this point, and it goes in this case goes from concave up, and now we're going concave down, and that's uh, used by the second derivative test. And I'll go over that in my uh, next video. Well, actually, I mean, I'll go over, uh, I, think, I think I'll include that in the next video as well, but I'll go over this uh, proof that it's exactly 500 whenever the solutions are start below P equals 500. And to show that it's always the slope is greatest when P equals 500. Anyways, that's all for today. If you learned from this pretty interesting uh, video, example video on using direction fields to learn more about this logistic differential equation. And again, make sure to watch my earlier videos to get uh, caught up on this if you haven't already done so. Anyways, that's all for today. If you learned, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.